and welcome to Talk Time. My guest today is Mr. Utpal Bora, the Chairman and Managing Director of Oil India Limited, a Navratna company that is one of the country's important and big oil majors. Mr. Utpal Bora, once again, welcome to my show. Uh, thank you very much for having me. Pleasure. Yeah. Uh, you see, Oil India Limited and Northeast India, it almost has a symbiotic relationship. It's a win-win situation both for the company as well as for the Northeast. It has been like that for years now, for decades actually. So how do you look at it? What has been your company's trust areas of late in this region? Yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, in fact, uh, you know, the, uh, the people of Assam has an emotional connect uh, with uh, Oil India. As you know, it started uh, way back as uh, the Burma Oil Company, and right. then it became the Assam Oil Company, then it evolved to Oil India Limited when it was nationalized in 1981. Right. And since then, it has been a, a, a central uh, PSU. And, uh, and you know, uh, uh, in this regard, uh, the people of Assam also has a, they have a lot of expectations from uh, Oil India. And uh, we at Oil India, we are trying our best to, you know, uh, you know, uh, meet those, uh, uh, satisfy those aspirations of those uh, people, and through mainly through our CSR uh, your activities. activities yeah, mm -hmm. and like uh, as you know, Oil India has been doing a lot of CSR work in uh, 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 Northeast, specifically in Assam, because our main operating area, as you know, is uh, uh, confined to the districts of uh, Dibrugarh and uh, Tinsukia. And then we have a presence in Arunachal in the northeast, mm -hmm. and uh, we have some exploration in Mizoram. Then mm -hmm. uh, roughly, roughly, mm -hmm. can you give us an idea as to the extent of your CSR activities in terms of uh, you know the money spent, yeah. in terms of your key uh, areas of focus? In fact, uh, uh, last year uh, we spent around uh, approximately 133 crores on uh, CSR. On CSR, uh, that, CSR. That, that's huge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Actually, as you know, uh, we are mandated as per the Companies Act Absolutely. to spend around 2% of our yeah. you know, uh, profit yeah. after tax. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I'm uh, happy. But are you spending more than yeah, that? Yeah, I'm happy to say that we are spending much more than that. Yeah. And even this year also, we plan to spend uh, much more. Mm -hmm. And in addition to these uh, uh, activities confined uh, to the Northeast, we have been you know, uh, sponsoring the flagship companies of the government also. Okay. Like, uh, for example, we are uh, beautifying the, you know, uh, temple uh, premises, which is a uh, uh, government of India iconic uh, places, uh, uh, what you call a scheme. Uh, and then, then the, the Swaj Bharati, you know, that scheme, yeah. that is a continuous mm -hmm. process. We are doing it in almost so, a small So basically, towns. Mr. Bora, you know, your company, that is Oil India Limited, is moving ahead hand in hand with some of the plans and programs of the government on one side. Yeah, and, and you're also trying to fulfill the hopes and aspirations of the, the people, people exactly. on the other. So exactly. it's basically you're working for the interest of the, the people, people of this yeah. region and the yeah. country as a whole. Yeah. So uh, the, in, in short, in, that is that is basically exactly, the yeah. sense. But in this, in this connection, I would like to mention uh, one yeah. of the schemes which unfortunately has not, you know, uh, uh, got the publicity it should have got, like uh, the Super 30 scheme. Okay. Uh, actually, you probably have heard about the Super 30 yeah. in uh, mm -hmm. of Patna. Yeah. Uh, where, you know, they train 30, you know, for, boys for, for, uh, for the yeah, IITs and all. Yeah. yeah. And mainly from the, you know, underprivileged uh, and uh, you what you call uh, poor families. Yeah. On similar lines, oil has been uh, running a Super 30 scheme, which unfortunately, as I said, it's not, uh, had not been mm -hmm. publicized. Mm -hmm. And I take this opportunity to tell the, you know, the people of Assam that yeah. this uh, centre has been running now for almost uh, uh, six so to seven years. this is for the Northeast or this is for Assam alone? No, this is for the Northeast plus where we operate. Like, uh, for example, we have a centre in Guwahati, we have a centre in Jorhat, we have a centre in Dubagar, then we have a centre in uh, so what is Itanagar. The what is the success rate yeah. of mm -hmm. your Super 30? Yeah, that's what I say. Uh, till now, till uh, till date, we have uh, uh, we have coached uh, some 800 odd uh, students, mm -hmm. and they all come from uh, you know uh, from very poor families, and they're screened. Uh, uh, taking into account their, you know, income uh, levels, yeah. I think mm -hmm. it is less than probably uh, 1.5 lakhs, and then they have they have to have a minimum 75 percent in their high secondary or uh, class 12 exams, mm -hmm. and then we g give them free coaching right. for 11 but months. But some of these uh, some of these uh, uh. boys and girls whom uh, who are a product of this oil super uh, uh, 30 uh, scheme uh, 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 tutorials, uh, they have basically made it to the IIT. Yeah, yeah. You know? As I said, out of 800 odd uh, uh, till date, 150 have made it to the IIT. 155. I think yeah. this is a Big number. Yeah. And the rest have made it to the <laughs> NITs and the other, uh, you know, uh, tier two engineering colleges. Okay. So that's that is that is quite yeah, yeah. quite yeah, good. Yeah. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, Mr. Polbara, 
you will agree as the person running All India Limited, any company, whether it is in the public sector or the private sector, Second. has to do good business. Yeah. Now, my question to you, uh, hydrocarbons, it's a scenario is very, very critical in this country. Uh, you know, the figures suggest that, you know, our project, projected refining capacity, 24, 25, is about 360 million tons. Our production, domestic production, is only about 35 to 40 million, million tons. tons. Now, challenge for all the oil companies, including yours, is very, very huge because 85 to 90 percent of India's uh, crudes uh, is imported from outside. Right. So how long is this going to go on? Is the scenario going to change? And where does the Northeast figure in your scheme of things? Because this is one of the richest oil producing regions, at least in the country. Exactly. Uh, as uh, you have rightly pointed out, the country imports around 80% of the crude requirement. And uh, you know, consumption is increasing every year. Every year. And probably today we are the third largest uh, consumer of energy in the world. And this demand is definitely going to rise. And uh, historically, there have been only two companies producing oil uh, domestically. It's, uh, one is ONGC, uh, the second is oil, and in the private sector it's uh, Cairn. Yeah. But unfortunately, uh, production levels of ONGC, oil and cane have all uh, fallen. And this is a natural phenomenon because this is something, you know, uh, which nature has uh, yeah. given us. Yeah. So it cannot, uh, you know, continue uh, for indefinitely. So it has to fall. In, in fact, uh, all uh, oil fields behave the same way all over the world. So there's a time when the decline starts. And unfortunately, in India also, in ONGC oil, the decline has uh, begun and uh, also in cane. <laughs> So now what, so what the government is doing is, because we are uh, uh, importing uh, almost 80%, so now the government has, uh, and one thing I should tell you, oil has been now, uh, let me just be specific to oil only, oil has been operating in the northeast part, primarily we have a mining lease of 5,000 square kilometers yeah. in uh, Assam, yeah. and a small uh, number in Arunachal. So we are the main oil, in fact the uh, total oil production comes from that area only. Right. So that we have been doing it since uh, say 1959. Mm -hmm. So and uh, to tell you oil is going to complete 60 years in uh, on yeah. 18th of February mm -hmm. 2019. So 60 years we've been producing from the same area. And uh, in a way, you know, uh, it's become saturated. That means probably we'll not be able to produce uh, much more area. Ahead. And there'll be no scope for exploration, yeah. no space. So, so now what has happened yeah. is... What is the alternative? Yeah, yeah, I'll tell you. So government has uh, at the, uh, just at the right time come, come up with the, the OALP scheme. It's the, you know, mm, uh, uh, auction for uh, what you call exploring in other areas than the uh, ones we already have. Open acreage license policy. Yeah. Uh, so that the government has already come and uh, it, it was put up for you know auction. Yeah. And uh, oil uh, oil has won uh, uh, nine blocks in uh, in the northeast. Nine blocks. Blocks, yeah. Okay. And uh, nine blocks. So, so, uh, so that it, means uh, oil what? has bagged nine blocks nine in blocks. this auction. Uh, yeah, in this auction. Okay. Uh, out so of there the, were private players also who yeah, were bidding for players, it. Yeah, private players. There was ONGC. There mm -hmm. were other players. There okay. was Cairn. So oil also, has uh, won nine blocks. Nine blocks. And which are which are some of the states where these blocks are yeah, located? Yeah, the the out of Manipur, the nine blocks, uh, the Mizoram. mainly no, it, it's mainly in Assam. Mainly in Assam. And mainly in Assam. Okay. Say around uh, we have around, around seven blocks in uh, Assam. One in Arunachal and one in uh, uh, Rajasthan. Okay. Yeah, because Rajasthan also we have a very small uh, gas field uh, in Rajasthan, so they also we bid and we and we competed against Cairn, other private players, and uh, ONGC. Yeah. So now, uh, as you said, now now the thing is that uh, these are open for exploration now. So now the possibility of getting more hydrocarbons has now increased manyfold. On this note, we go for a short break. Stay on, when I come back, I shall continue this conversation with Mr. Utpal Bora, the Chairman and Managing Director of Oil India Limited. <music> Welcome back. I am in conversation with the Chairman and Managing Director of Oil India Limited, Mr. Utpal Bora. Uh, Mr. Bora, you see, we are talking about the hydrocarbon challenges. We are talking about the production challenges. Uh, now. Oil India Limited has bagged nine blocks in the Northeast. Now, which are some of the absolutely uncharted territory? For example, uh, in Mizoram, you had recently, the company has advertised for drilling engineers and others. So that means there's some activity going on in Mizoram. At the same time, you had recently met the Manipur chief minister. You were supposed to do a 870 kilometer long line seismic survey. Uh, you are doing the seismic survey, obviously, with the hope that 
some positive results could be located there, but you're having a lot of problems in carrying on with the uh, seismic survey in uh, Manipur, out of 870 kilometers, you have been able to do only about four to five kilometers uh, of survey. Now, what is the scenario in some of the new areas that you are trying to move ahead, like Manipur, Mizoram? Yeah. And I'd also like to ask about Nagaland, if, yeah, any, okay. if at all. Uh, in this connection, uh, uh, likewise, uh, uh, like, uh, not likewise, like OLP, the government has also come up with the scheme of NSP, which is called National Seismic Program. Yeah. Okay, that is to, uh, as you know, before you go for oil exploration, the first thing do you do a seismic, seismic survey. Se yeah. survey. So that is the first thing before you can actually go and uh, drill wells. So in India, in many of the areas in the sediment, there are some 24 sedimentary basins in uh, India. So till now, uh, all have not been, you know, uh, surveyed till now. So the government around three years back, they come, came up with this program of uh, NSP. And uh, what they have done is they have given the mandate to Oil India to cover the entire Northeast. And the rest of uh, India is being done by OEGC. Okay. Mm -hmm. So on those lines, we are now uh, going ahead with the NSP program. In fact, we, uh, but the problem in Northeast is like, for example, Manipur. We had to go in with the chief minister because we are having uh, some, uh, you know, security issues uh, doing the work. So we went to meet the minister and he has assured us that he'll uh, do but, the need But it is very important to do this seismic exactly. service. Exactly. Then only we'll know no, uh, whether oil is there or not. Mm -hmm. So the NSP program has to be, you know, uh, uh, done and completed. In fact, uh, but, uh, deadline is uh, March 2019. Uh, and hopefully we'll be able to, you know, and meet the deadline. What is, it, what is going on in Mizoram? In Mizoram, uh, Mizoram actually, uh, as you know, before this OLP scheme, there was an NELP scheme going on yeah. uh, in India. In fact, uh, NELP, there, there were nine rounds of, uh, eight rounds of NELP. And this Mizoram block was backed by oil in one of those NLP, NELP rounds. So at that time we did... So uh, uh, has it already been struck? Has oil been struck uh, no, no, or no, you no, are yet uh, to... No, no. Yet so to... Uh, in fact this uh, program started around five, six years back okay. and uh, during that time we drilled two wells in Mizoram. So unfortunately both the, well went, uh, both the wells went dry. So we were in fact looking for gas. So now what we have done is we have asked for an extension to do more exploration work. So now as you are seeing in those advertisements for you know engineers, yeah. rigs and all, mm -hmm. so you are going to be uh, to drill more wells in Mizoram and hopefully this time will be uh, successful in uh, so that means, gas. apart from Assam, you have your operations in Arunachal from a very long time. Yeah. Uh, Mizoram, you are going to begin yeah, your yeah. search. No, Mizoram already started. Or, now already we're, started. Gonna, uh, we're going to, I mean, expand, uh, expand, expand your yeah, activity. Yeah, yeah. Manipur, it's yeah, a very, yeah, very yeah. nascent. Uh, in fact, all the other states of uh, the North East, states. Yeah. Basically, other states will be seismic service. Yeah. Now, you see, the, a question often been asked, uh, Mr. Bora, is this, that Oil India Limited has roughly about 10,000 uh, workforce. You're producing roughly about... Three million tons. Isn't no, it? no. Well, I think that figure we have uh, roughly around seven thousand, not ten thousand. Seven thousand people. 000, uh, yeah. Okay, seven thousand workforce. So production is roughly about say three point three million. Three point three million tons. It has been around that three figure, no figure yeah. from many many years yeah. now. Now the, I just want to understand, and for the sake of our listeners and viewers, mm. uh, Eric. I know your social obligations. Mm. That is why you may be having 7,000 mm. people, mm. Yeah. because you are also a company that has to take care of a lot of other mm. yeah, issues, exactly, yes. social welfare issues. Now, a company like Cairns, which is another major player in India, they may be having just a few hundred people and also producing around 3 million tons. So how would you explain this uh, from uh, your, in uh, your own yeah, words? The basic difference is, you know, the public and the private sector. In Cairns, as you said, the, uh, apparently the workforce appears to be very small compared to the PSUs. But then you will have to remember that PSUs are also avenues of, uh, for employment. Yes. Huh, so that That's one, why I yeah, started yeah, my exactly, question yeah. with that. So uh, uh, on one hand, we have to you know look after the employment of the region of the country also. That is one part. And secondly, in private companies, most of the you know uh, services are outsourced. Like for example, in uh, OEGC and Oil India, we own our own rigs. Rigs. So to run the rigs, we need people. But in Cairn, they, they don't have their own rigs. If they want to drill something, they'll outsource. So the so that workforce so which is required for yeah rigs yeah, and yeah, 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 all, yeah all are outsourced. So mm -hmm. that's why apparently it appears that the workforce is uh, I'm not saying it's big compared to the public sector it's obviously less. But then uh, majority of the major operations are outsourced, which is not done. Uh, we also outsource, but to a great extent we have our own uh, now, rigs. Uh. Now another thing, as you as you said that you know. Uh, the people of Assam or the people of the Northeast has got a different kind of a attachment with a company like yours, yeah. that is Oil India Limited. Uh, you are also from Assam. That's, uh, let's put these mm. two backgrounds in place before yes, I ask yeah. you this question. Now, 
are you happy with the, what, how, what are the other reasons that affects productivity? Because I'm not talking alone about the sun, the bund culture, yeah. you know, the work culture in the entire Northeastern region. We being from the Northeastern region, we have to self-criticize exactly. ourselves yeah, yeah, because yeah. we are all from this region. Now my question is, the work culture, the productivity issues, these are critical issues uh, that impacts on the overall performance of any company, a uh, production-oriented company. So, what has been your experience? Do you think had the work, for, work culture been better, you would have been able to produce much better? Or yeah. uh, but If you recall, I took away on uh, July uh, 2016. At that time, uh, the production of Oil India was uh, almost you know, doing a nosedive. Uh, so, and my greatest challenge was to you know, arrest the decline and then turn it uh, what you call upwards. And I'm happy to tell you that since 2016, we have been able to increase the production. In 2016-17, we, we could increase it by 1%. In 2017-18, we could increase it by 3.5%. And hopefully this year we'll be uh, able to increase by 4 to 5%. So, so I'll tell you what, what's the reason behind mm. this. The uh, main reason is that we are the management, we have been very, uh, what you call, uh, strict in monitoring the operations. We have taken some uh, uh, harsh uh, decisions and by uh, which you know things have become more organized and that is one reason for the increase in production and, uh, and the credit also goes to all our you know all each and every oil indian for uh, because this oil the oil industry i cannot do it alone it's a teamwork yeah, basically yeah. so the credit goes to each and every oil indian they have also been working and especially to the you know the boys and girls uh, you know toiling day in and day out in uh, what you call in the fields yes uh, breathing you know uh, the uh, rainy season breathing the hot sun etc etc yeah so that's and thirdly most important uh, aspect is that as you rightly pointed out in Assam we had that you know culture of burns protests uh, disruptions and all that even in oil India when I took over there were a lot of uh, disruptions and one reason for fall in production one of one of the reasons was that uh, there were frequent burns frequent disruptions How is the situation uh, a yeah, lot yeah, better today yeah, yeah yeah that's what I'm saying so there were a lot of disruptions so what we did was uh, first we approached the you know state government so in fact I went uh, I met the uh, honorable chief minister the what you call uh, industry minister yeah. and the you know the senior officials and uh, I'm very happy to say that we got uh, full support from them and because one of the reasons for you know these buns getting uh, uh, what you call lesser and lesser is the support of the state government the, then I should uh, mention the names of the DCs and the SPs of yeah. both the districts they have helped us a lot and thirdly I think uh, uh, the different associations as you know in Assam there are a lot of uh, student associations starting from ASU Moran Students Union Motok Students Union there are plenty of unions they uh, you know, their main uh, grievance was that they need employment. Uh, employment was the main, uh, what you call, uh, source of dissent uh, uh, to these associations. So what we did, uh, what we did was, we you know we had a dialogue with all these associations, one to one, very frank dialogue, and we made it very clear that uh, uh, we Absolutely. understand your problem. But thing is, oil cannot uh, you know continue to employ people uh, without limit. We have our own capacity. In fact, uh, once I told the honourable chief minister that I'll promise you that every year we'll be recruiting around five, uh, what you call, in next five years, two thousand five hundred people. Because so have we, you been? Uh, have yeah, you we been are doing it. We are doing it. In fact, so now as I speak to you, point. yeah. Uh, as I speak to you, we are now in this year. We'll be uh, recruiting almost 500 uh, people, both 500 officers, people. yeah, all uh, officers as well as uh, uh, work workers, and uh, that we needed because our, you know, uh, gradually so uh, with the OLP. So these are employment from Assam. Yeah. These are employment from Assam. Uh, yeah, yeah. You have already done 500. Yeah. And so you are, yeah, next you are year also going to do yeah, 500 yeah, yeah, in 1819. Yeah. So uh, approximately 2,500 in the next five years, starting from last year. On that note, we we'll go for not a short break. Stay on. We'll be right. Welcome back. I'm still in conversation with Mr. Utpal Bora, the Chairman and Managing Director of Oil India Limited. Uh, Mr. Bora, this huge mega project, uh, you know, that 600 crore gas grid pipeline project connecting the entire state capitals of the Northeast with a gas pipeline, yeah. and then on connecting it with the national grid. grid. So, can you explain in brief uh, what, it is, what is this and how is it going to impact on the Northeast? Uh, in fact, uh, a gas grid was always in existence, in the, especially in the western northern part of India. And it was being expanded towards the east 
but then it's uh, it was stopping at you know uh, Bengal, Bihar, and Orissa. It was not coming towards uh, the northeast. Yeah. So there was there were a lot of uh, discussions with the ministry, even our state government officials uh, took it up. We also took it up, and finally uh, the uh, require the finally the necessity was to connect the. Connect the northeast to the national, uh, you know, oil grid. grid. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, sorry, uh, gas grid. Yeah. So now that uh, uh, work has already begun. In fact, that is being uh, constructed by Gale India Limited. So now uh, the first thing is that uh, the, there will be a connection from Barauni to uh, Guwahati. Okay. Uh, a gas line. So that so that will ensure connection of northeast to the gas grid. Parallelly, what has happened is now we, the all the uh, five oil companies like ONGC, Oil India, Gale, IOC, and Numbaligar, we have uh, formed a joint, joint venture. venture company. We have formed a joint mm -hmm. venture, and now we'll be construct uh, connecting all the northeast capitals to this uh, from Guwahati. Now, yeah. Uh, how is it going to impact the region? Yeah, uh, see, now uh, now the thing is, you know, as you know, gas is a very efficient and uh, clean form of energy, yeah. opposed to coal and, uh, uh, you know, oil. So the government's uh, aim is to, you know, uh, today, today we, uh, in the energy basket, gas uh, figures, uh, gas uh, has a percentage of around 4% only, 3 to 4%. So the government's aim is to uh, take it up to 15%. And the world average is around 25%. Uh, and uh, significantly... But in India, the coal is 50%. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Which is yeah, shocking. Yeah, yeah. And so, oil yeah. is only 25%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then gas is even uh, less, as I said. But in Gujarat, in the state of Gujarat, the, uh, in the energy basket, uh, gas... Uh, has a you know a share of almost uh, 23 to 24 percent. So the government now wants to uh, increase it from 4 percent to 10, then to 15. So if you want to do that, you have to cover the entire country. Right. Uh, and uh, the uh, you'll be asking me uh, where will you get the gas. Yeah. So now we have been uh, India is in the process of importing LNG from uh, different uh, yeah, parts of uh, the world. So the main source of gas will be the LNG. Uh, LNG. So there are many LNG terminals in the western coast, yeah. and some are coming up in the eastern coast. So the eastern and northern and will be fed by the LNG terminals, which will be coming up in the uh, eastern coast. And this particular uh, exercise will be, take around, say, uh, two and a half to three years. So by that time, everything should be in place. Now, who will be the end users? Yeah, end users. Uh, 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 the first thing that will happen is uh, this gas, uh, when we connect it to the uh, national grid, yeah. the gas that will come, so first, uh, the, what the state company, yeah, actually the onus is on the state company, they have to be the uh, what you call uh, customers, basically. So as you know, in Assam, the power is an issue. So probably the government is thinking about setting up small power plants, yeah. and that will be run by the gas. Thirdly is, uh, you know, uh, city gas distribution. Uh, like, city uh, gas uh, distribution. Yeah, pipe gas. Uh, pipe gas. So, so that is going to become a reality. Yeah. In fact, it is already a reality in many parts. Like in Delhi, you have the yeah, yeah, uh, pipe yeah. gas in Bombay. But what about, uh, uh, what about Guwahati? Yeah, is it Guwahati, going to become yeah, a reality yeah, in yeah, Guwahati? Yeah, two areas in Assam. One is the Guwahati and the surrounding areas. It's called Guwahati, Guwahati Metro. Unlike the NCR. And a third is that Silchan, uh, Silchar, Karimganj, Halakandi area. Okay, the, uh, now Kachar Guwahati area. Metro, that uh, bid, uh, when is the auction going to take the place? The auction is already, is already over. Uh -huh. and, uh, you, you have bid? Uh, yeah, we have bid and, 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 and unofficially we have uh, uh, won it. But so um, I oil, cannot give you an official statement. I know. Yeah. But, but, mm. uh, but, but at the end of the day, Oil India Limited is diversified. It is going to come up with the city gas distribution yeah. soon and uh, in Guwahati as well. Yeah, I, but in fact, again, we have formed a joint venture with uh, Assam Gas Company Limited and Gale India Limited. Assam Gas so, Company, uh, company and Gale. Gale India and Oil India, we have formed a joint venture and we have bid for that city gas distribution. So, so the roughly 2 million people in and around Guwahati, yeah, 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 yeah. or maybe 1 million yeah, exactly, people, yeah, yeah. will get piped gas, Pipe gas yeah. uh, you know, metered. Metered, yeah. Uh, they'll have to pay uh -huh. the bill according yeah, yeah. to the use. Uh, and it'll be much cheaper than your... Yeah, you you, you pay, yeah. pay according no, to no, whatever yeah, you use, yeah, you pay for that. Exactly. There'll yeah. be a meter. Yeah, yeah meter. Huh. So this is happening in... What, what kind of a time frame do you time guess? Time frame, again, I'm saying, say, first the gas has to come. First, the gas has to come. Yeah. But uh, what, is a, come. what is a good guess? Yeah, good, uh, as I said, no, the timeline, because the uh, construction of the gas grid has already begun, I told yeah. you. So uh, that timeline <coughs> is around two and a half to three years. And the parallelly, all <coughs> the uh, capitals will also be you know, uh, connected. Right. So that is also moving <coughs> parallelly. So once the gas comes, uh, then... That's going uh, to uh, yeah, then be a reality. Yeah. So maybe, say, uh, 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 to be very what you call optimistic, I should say in another uh, three to four years, right. uh, it should be connected. Now, huh? Mr. Bora, uh, we have talked business enough. Yeah, yeah. Now, my uh, all good conversations has to come to an end. Yeah, my yeah. question is, uh -huh. you know, you have been a, traditionally an oil man. You have yeah. been in this industry for so long. Uh, yeah. Now, uh, behind every person, you know, there are some 
family uh, support, yeah. there are somebody, you must be have had an inspiration within the family. How did it all start uh, on a personal note? Uh, like, uh, uh, like uh, I have, uh, my mother was one of the uh, inspirations. Your mother? Uh, yeah. Uh, I think she was instrumental in me, you know, making me uh, take studies very seriously. Uh, so when I was in school or college, she was very, she was, she ruled us with an iron, uh, you know. So in a way, she was your first guru, uh, guru yeah, at yeah, home. Exactly, exactly. Mm. And then after that, after I uh, completed my, you know, education and uh, what you call, uh, joined ONGC. As yeah. you know, I joined ONGC yes, earlier yes. and I came to Oral India. And uh, of course, my family, my wife, my children, they have been a tremendous, uh, you know, mm -hmm. source of inspiration and support. Right. Because see, uh, being an oil man, we used to be away from our home for long periods of time. Absolutely. Uh, and with uh, two children, I think that my wife did a terrific job in, you know, taking care of them. Taking care their, of the home uh, front. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Their, 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 you know, studies, their other requirements. Mm -hmm. So I think my wife has a very uh, important role to play. Absolutely. And as they say, behind, I, I'm not saying that, some... Uh, to an extent, successful one, there's always a, you know... Woman. Yeah, behind every <laughs> so, success story yeah, or a successful yeah, yeah, man, yeah, there is a woman. A woman yeah. Absolutely, yeah. more power to yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, women. Yeah. On, that, on that note, yeah. we end yeah, thank this you conversation. Very much, yeah. Thank you very yeah, much yeah, for yeah. Okay. being on my show. Yeah.